Okay, so now that I've got the regular expression introduction out of the way, I want to talk about some of the practical applications of regular expressions in JavaScript. So some of the regular expression methods and string methods that use regular expressions. All right, so we have a sample web page here. I've got a place where I can enter in some pattern that I want to use as my regular expression. Um, I'm going to be setting the global flag so it finds all of the matches instead of just the first one. Um, I've got another input for doing replacement text. If I want to find and replace, I can do that. And I've got one button for just running the search and then a second function for doing find and replace. So we'll take a look at that. All right, we've got a simple form. There's an input type equals text called find, another one called replace. Those are my two text fields. And then the two buttons. I've got a paragraph with the class content. This is the paragraph of text that we're going to be searching through. And then another one called with the class output, which is where I'm going to write messages to the user after they click the buttons. My DOM content loaded event. So when the page first loads, all I'm doing is I'm adding the two listeners to those two buttons, the search and replace buttons. They'll each call their own function. One doing a search, one doing the find and replace. Okay, so this is the list of methods I want to talk about. With a regular expression object, once you've created one, and there's two ways of doing it. Um, one is, we could say, like this. I can go inside of here and I can create a pattern. So we can say, um, hi followed by m or s. There we go. There's my regular expression. The forward slash at the start and at the end, and then inside, this is the pattern I'm going to be searching for. So either the word him or the word his in lowercase and globally searching. So that's one way of creating it. The second way is with new regexp. And then if you do that, you can pass in a string. So I'm taking the string that you would find in that first text field, the, the find one, and the second option, the second parameter for the constructor function is which flags do you want to use? Do you want to do global? Do you want to do case insensitive? Do you want to do multi-line matching? There's a whole bunch of different flags. Global is probably the most common one, so that's one I'm going to use right here. I am going to do a case sensitive search. I want to treat capitals and lowercase as different things. So I'm not using this in my code, but I'm going to leave it there just as a reference to show you how you can create them without this new constructor written out fully. You can also do it with just regex without new in front of it. That will work too, but it's best form to put the new there. All right. Now, these next three lines are going to be the same lines inside of each of the functions. I'm getting the content. That's the paragraph that we're searching inside of. I'm going to be getting the... Um, replacement text. Oh, actually, I don't need the replacement text in this one, so we can just we can comment that line out or delete it, whatever you like. We do not need that line for this one because we're not going to do a replace. We're just going to do the find. Now, output is where I'm going to write the messages to the user. Okay, so we have a variable re. That is our regular expression. Whatever the person has put inside that text field as the value, that is going to be used as the pattern. And we're going to do the same thing in the other one. So regardless of which function, that's what we're starting with, is a global search for whatever they typed. Then we're going to search inside of txt, which is the content on the page. All right, so let's take a look at the first method here. With a regular expression object, we've got a test method where you pass the text in that you're searching against the regular expression object that you created, and it will return a true or false. So very simply, if I said re.test, re being just my variable name here, and I'm searching through that text, and I can just do an else if, and we can say output dot text content equals found a match, else we didn't find one, so we'll say text content not found. Okay, so there's our first test. So inside of here, uh, let's say we're just searching for the word rich. If the word rich exists, boom, we found a match. Okay, how about uh, we're searching for the phrase very, very rich. 
do the search, not found. That phrase is nowhere to be found inside of here. The word his or him, so that pattern that we were talking about before. There we go. The letters H, I, followed by M or S. And we'll actually put a word boundary in front of it. So it has to be the start of a word. And we'll do our search. Found a match. And I know that there are several places in here where we've got uh, him or his showing up. There's one right here. I think there's four or five of them inside of here. Here's a, a his up here. Okay. So that first method right here, the test, just returns a boolean. It says yes or no, you found it. Okay, so for the next one, we're going to do match. Now, match, instead of just giving me a boolean, true or false, that it did match, it's going to either return null if nothing was found, or it's going to give me an array of all of the matches that were found. Now, with a regular expression, we're actually using symbols to do this. Inside the regular expression, there is a property called match, but it's a, it's a symbol, the name of the property. So it's going to be unique for every single regular expression. There's going to be a property that refers to the matches that were found inside of whatever text. So here's the current matches, or here's the current replacement. So there's these internal properties that are unique for each regular expression. I know it's an odd syntax. If this confuses you, if you're not comfortable at all with syntax, for symbols, then you can just do the string version. There is a string method, which is string, whatever the string is that you're searching for, that would be our txt here. We can call the match method on the string and pass in the pattern. So it's just sort of the reverse. Here we go, regular expression, and then square bracket syntax to find the match inside of here. So I'll show you both. I'm just going to comment that out. and. We will come in here and do the first version. So we'll say let match equal re, that's our regular expression, and then we want to access the symbol.match property, which is a method, and we pass in the text that we're searching. This is going to return either null or an array. So if match else and we'll say our output again dot text content not found or text content is going to be equal to let's write out the length of the array so match dot length that'll tell us how many matches and then we'll have a space and then we'll write out the JSON stringify version of match. So that'll write out the whole array for us. All right, let's try that out. So we're looking for hi, or word boundary hi, and then either the letter m or s or t, we'll say, if the word hit is somewhere inside there. We'll do our search. There we go. There were four matches, his, 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 and him. Those were the four things that matched. Here's the first his, here's another his, anyway, you can search through it for it. This is how the match works with that one syntax, or if you're using the string version, it would be let match equal txt, that is our string object, which is the content, and then we're going to do dot match and pass in our regular expression like that. So these two lines right here, they are identical. They are working the exact same way. So word boundary H I M or S. Do the search. We get the exact same result. So works either way, whichever way you want to write the syntax. Now for the um, replace, what we're doing here, again, we have a version that's got the symbol inside of it as the property or the string version, they will work the same way. These will return for us a new string. So the new version of whatever the TXT is, after we've gone through, found all the matches, we provide some text and then the replacement. 
that'll be the replacement here and then replace the regular expression and then the replacement text. So it takes in these two things and it gives us back a new version of the string. That means if you are trying to, let me close this up, if you are going to try and do a find and replace, you have to take whatever the thing is that you're trying to replace. Like this is my, my text that I'm passing in here. So this is the text that I'm trying to do the find and replace inside of. I have to replace what's on the page. So we can say that is going to be equal to, and I'll do the string version just because it's shorter to type, string.replace, and then the regular expression followed by, what do you want to replace it with? Oops. What do you want to replace the pattern matches? plural because we're doing global. What do you want to replace them with? Well, it's whatever was inside the second text field. So that'll be the replace. And then we can just write a message. Output dot text content equals replace finished. Okay, so jumping back to the page, we want to find word boundary H I and then S or M and we want to replace it with and just to make it stand out I'm gonna make it all caps the word dude so when I click on here we're gonna do the replace of those four instances oh I missed something there oh my variable right here str I was just looking at what I had written up here but it's not that our variable here you probably noticed txt so txt is the string that we're doing the find and replace inside of. There we go. So once again, we'll try this. So word boundary, h, i, and then either m or s, we're replacing it with dude. Do the replacement. There we go. The replace is finished. And we have the four instances were replaced with this. Okay. Now, just for uh, reference sake, the way that you would do this with the regular expression. Let me minimize that. There we go. So we do the first half text content is the same, then equals a regular expression, and then just the word just like this. And you're going to find it in here, and we're going to replace it with replace. So this variable is the same for both, but we're just switching places for the RE and the TXT. RE and the TXT, just changing places. Okay, uh, the only other thing that's additional to this is this search method. And this kind of works like index of. What it's going to return is a negative one, like an index of function does. It returns negative one if it doesn't find it, or it will return the first match. And that's it. That is the regular expressions, um, practical uses with the string and the regular expression object. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments down below. A uh, link to the starter code is down in the description if you need it, and as well a link to the playlist with regular expressions that includes the initial introduction. And as always, thanks for watching.